We know that the Democratic Party doesn't really feel too keen on actual democracy. Like, we're, we're pretty familiar with that, all of it. And I'm glad you brought up, like, you know, that people shouldn't worry whether or not a progressive wins this seat, because I know that, you know, like strategically people get all their panties in a bunch when they think that that should rightfully belong to someone else. I see people in the chat wanting to know why you didn't consider DSA as a platform to run. Like everybody has. So, DSA, so uh, let me, I'm sorry, sorry to interrupt. So no. DSA endorsed in a different district and they didn't open up the process again. So there's only two organizations I know that didn't do that. And, um, and, you know, Gustavo Rivera is dealing with one of them. He's making the same complaints against the Bronx Democratic Party. Um, I've been a DSA member for a very long time. Maurice Fart, uh, the president, literally, like, signed me up in person. Um, you know, I was, I, I don't think I need to say that I'm a socialist. But institutions, you know, there's a reason Michael Brooks said, be kind to people and, and ruthless to institutions. Because institutions can be affected by a lot of things. And, um I wish that DSA did open up their endorsement process for after redistricting. It's what a lot of organizations have done. Um, Matriarch, which I, I'm, the, I'm the director of our board, decided to hold off on endorsements in many different situations because they knew redistricting was going to affect it. And, and um, you know, I, I appreciate uh, the comment about that, but um, DSA is a democratic organization and there's a lot of members and a lot of members didn't vote in us. And, you know... I live here. And when you live in the district and people recruit you from the district, I'm sitting at a, a supporter's restaurant right now in Astoria. Um, they want to make sure that they have representation that is rooted in the district. And I think as a socialist, being your history of progress, your documented history of progress and fights, your, your, your ability to, to be part of a community is important. And if we're not talking about things, I don't know what this is anymore. Is it a machine? And so, you know, I hear what some people are saying, um, but I, I definitely urge you to think about, do you want someone who's rooted in the district? Do you want somebody who has a legacy of, of progressive history? And do you want someone who's recruited by the community? Or do you want a machine? Right. I would argue that the most important thing is to have an actual fair election. So the whole concept that, that primaries are somehow impolite as if somebody is supposed to be anointed or even who is sitting there is supposed to just be entitled to sit there is ludicrous. And the Democrats are so much worse about that, I think. And it's it's really shameful. So I don't know whatever the nonsense and the political crap you're dealing with in your district with whoever's telling you shouldn't do this or should. And it's such bullshit. Like I find that real, the whole point of a primary people is for people to pick who they want. Like, that's the point of it, you know? And, and, and to be fair, a lot of this is just online. I mean, I live here. I, I mean, when you live in it, when you're <laughs> walking down the street and you run into people you know, and you go to the, you know, the street fairs and you go to the uh, fireworks shows and, and you run into your neighbors and you run into the restaurant owners and you run into, you know, your hairstylist the other day. I mean, it's just... It's just what happened. No one knows what's going on. This, this like weird debate on the I internet. Know, some of it's I like, thought that Twitter was real life. I mean, that's what <laughs> I can say. You can raise money. I mean, to be fair, you can raise money and you can boost yourself and um, and you can. That's I'm no foreigner to the internet as as you guys aren't either. Um, there are some definite uh, pluses to it. With that being said, pol all politics is local. I mean, I'm, I'm, yep. I, this is a very short race. Every single person who's running in this race are five candidates. Every single person in this race, as of a month ago, has to introduce themselves for, to this district. The only person with an exception to that is Elizabeth Crowley because she's run for Queensboro. Uh, she's run, run um, uh, Queenswide. And so she has, has done this before. And as of I, I've, I've run citywide. So, you know, you have to introduce yourself and no one comes in here with some sort of edge. Um, it's just, it's just what it is. And, and two people in this race were running in a completely different district, 85% dis different. And that's really important for folks. And, you know, I have been very reluctant to respond to a lot of the 
online insanity because it's it is that like I mean you guys don't like I yeah. when you're on the internet you've seen these rounds uh, you know whether it's the right wing whether it's people like I, we've gone to war with we've Hillary noticed, people we've <laughs> like, also noticed that there's a lot of uh, left spaces that have not been asking you to come on don't think that's not lost on us so that's the type of stuff where. You know, all that work that you did for Bernie over the past six years, it basically goes out the window. You know, we had, you know, we're very friendly with Andrew Yang. And, you know, one of the things that he said on our podcast that really resonated was I can agree with progressives in certain factions, especially in New York City, on 20 issues. But if I'm wrong on number 21, they may very well just cast me aside and be done with me altogether. And that, to me, was a huge part of why Eric Adams became the mayor. When I saw people saying you should rank Eric and not Andrew because they didn't like his take on Israel in particular. OK, fine. Uh, let's not forget what a significant portion, include, especially Borough Park, makes in terms of the vote. So he played politics. Don't have to agree sure. with what he did. But at the end of the day, you now have a mayor that I am sure most people don't really like. I Lord knows I wouldn't like him. So I, I think that there is something to be said for allowing the democratic process to take place. And that's one of the main reasons we want to have you on. One of the last things I did want to talk about, though, which I think is important. Over time, there are organizations that will evolve. They'll get better. They may not get better. Can you talk about what the effect is with some of these, like, I, I don't even have to name them. You know who they are. Um, they help candidates run and all of that. Can you talk about some of the, the politicalization of even our so-called progressive organizations that everyone thinks is really for the cause. But in reality, there is a lot of that machine politics yeah. that takes that over as well. Yeah. I mean, I think for folks who are not in New York or, and, and folks who are in New York, they may not be aware um, because New York is undeniably a democratic state. We rarely battle with Republicans. I mean, obviously upstate and Staten Island might be an exception, but in Long Island, um, but, you know, in the city, it is a Democratic game. So if you don't have a Democratic Party, what is the alternative? And so you're going to fundamentally have a new form of what in many other parts of the country is just the Democratic Party. So, you know, uh, their machines want to control folks um, who are running. And we've seen a history, a pattern of aggression against candidates who are independently progressive who defy the machine for whatever reason. Um, even in this, this area where I live, uh, some folks have gotten a lot of aggressive responses and threats. I mean, let me be real. A lot of people that are um, staying out of this race in terms of endorsements or have endorsed this race have been threatened. Um, you know, people, there's a lot of people who I have very long histories with that have been straight up said, you know, we're not going to have the support on XYZ thing if we don't endorse someone else in this race. Um, and, you know, that's that's the endorsement game. I mean, I think people may not necessarily and generally understand that a lot of endorsements come with deals. Doesn't mean that you're not friends with them or talking to them or whatever. Um, this is a this is a, a local race. So, you know, we're very, very, very much focused on hitting the ground, talking to our neighbors, talking to our friends, talking to our community leaders, because very, very, very rarely do endorsements make a difference in a race, um, especially a hyper-local. Thanks for watching. If you want to support our mission to transform politics into service, please like this video, subscribe, follow us on social media, and consider joining our Patreon, where you'll get early access to our interviews, as well as other exclusive content. Links are in the description. Peace out.